Attributes are special ways to extract information about named objects in VHDL. The use can make code readable and it can be very useful, but their position regarding synthesizability is a, an open question. So attributes are uh, ways in which we can extract information about named objects in VHDL. And by named objects, we mean anything from a signal to a component to an instance, an entity, uh, a, a data type. So basically, think about if you want to extract information about the length of a signal, if you want to extract information about um, the extent of a certain data type, that's how you get it. So if you want to understand attributes a little bit more deeply, we have to look at specific examples. And so I'm going to look at a selection of predefined attributes in uh, VHDL, and we'll just uh, figure out later how they can be used. So this table shows attributes that uh, can be applied to data types. They, uh, the table shows an example where the attribute is used with the data type standard logic vector 31 down to 0. So it's basically a bus of standard logic bits of length 32 bits. So um, the way we use attributes is by stating the name of the, uh, of the thing we want to extract the attribute out of, and then an apostrophe, and then the attribute itself. So in this case, type apostrophe base, uh, we would be using it with um, either the name of the type here or the name of a specific signal. So the, in this case, we have declared a signal S. We can use it this way, S dash base. But however, it will return information not about the signal, but about the data type of the signal. So base is usually used with um, subtypes. So if you have a subtype and uh, uh, you use base, it will return the parent type of that subtype. So the left attribute obviously returns the leftmost index, the right attribute, the rightmost index. Low returns the lowest index and high returns the highest index. So low and high and left and right could be uh, equal or could be different, could be opposite depending on whether or not the uh, indices of the bus are ascending or descending. So this attribute, ascending, it returns a, uh, a Boolean result, which is true if uh, the uh, indices are ascending and false if they are descending. In this case, uh, the index is descending, and so the return value is false. So if you say S uh, dash ascending, uh, this would have a value of false. Now, type dash range just returns the range of uh, the signal and reverse range returns the reverse range of the signal. Length returns an integer, which is the length of the signal. So how would you use this? Why would this be useful? Now, let's just assume that we want to declare a new signal, S2, and we want S2 to be uh, of perhaps the same type as uh, S, but we want the bus to be one bit shorter. We can do that by just using the numbers, inspecting this number is 31, so we could declare it as 30 down to uh, 0. Or instead, we could write it as um, uh, uh, s dash range minus 2 down to 0. This would achieve the same result, except that in this case, the uh, syntax is written only using um, uh, text, we are not using any specific numbers. Why would this be useful? It will be useful if you want our code to be scalable. We will understand what that means when we talk about generics, but it's a very good practice to do so. Now let's look at, no at another class of attributes. Uh, these act on components, entities, or instances, and what they do is they return the name of the entity as a, uh, as a text string. So if you uh, apply it to an entity, it will give you the entity name as a string. If you apply the uh, instance name uh, attribute, it will return not only the entity name, but, only the, but also the path uh, through all the components and all the declarations 
down to every instance of that entity that was used in the design. So when we look at structural design, we will see that we can use designs as components in other designs and instantiate them multiple times. This attribute will return the path down the levels of the hierarchy to every instance in which this entity was used. The path name uh, attribute will return only the path but not the entity name. So let's look at uh, a bunch of attributes that also act on data types. So they are similar to the first table. Uh, in this case, they are acting on the sample data type uh, at the top, which is an enumeration. So uh, for example, when we look at uh, uh, this attribute, which is type, so in this case, we'll be using state type and the attributes name is succession, and then we will have a sample, right? So it accepts an operand in addition to the, uh, st uh, to the type in which it acts. So if we, for example, we uh, use execute as an operand, then what it will return is the element of that data type that succeeds the uh, operand that we used. So if you look here, you will find that execute is succeeded by write, and so it will return write. Predecessor, on the other hand, returns the preceding data type, uh, the preceding value, so it would be the code. Uh, left of would also produce the code, and right of would produce uh, right. So uh, if you use, for example, this, which is the value attribute, so what you would give it is a position, a numerical position, and it will give you back the value of the uh, data type for that position. So Assume, for example, if you want to know what the value of the fifth uh, element in the data type is, you would use a state uh, type uh, dash value of five, and it will give you uh, execute as the return. The opposite is position. So you would give it the type, it's the value itself, and it will tell you at what position that value lies. So we have used it with weight here, and weight is in the second position, so it gives you a return value of two. So one thing here is that uh, left of and right of and succession and uh, successor and predecessor seem to be doing the same thing. Uh, and this is true in case we are defining a type, but in case we are defining a subtype, then the two sets of attributes do something different, where successor and predecessor will return the successor and predecessor in the parent type, whereas left of and right of will return the successor and predecessor in the current subtype. So let's look at um, this table of attributes which act on signals. So you would use a signal name with the attributes. And what they do is that they uh, return either a Boolean or a time return, which describes something that has happened to the signal. So the first attribute is really important. It's signal event. So you would use it with a specific signal. Let's say signal's name is A and A apostrophe event would return a true value when an event has happened on the signal. What is an event? An event is an actual transition on the signal. The active attribute, on the other hand, returns a true value when a transaction has happened on the signal. What is a transaction? A transaction is either a real change in the signal or it is a scheduled change that will happen in the future. We will not understand the difference between events and transactions unless we look at the process statement first. So we might as well delay that until then. But pay special attention to the event attribute because it's easy to understand. Whenever there's an actual change on the signal, it will be true. Okay. So uh, last event is an attribute that returns a time and that time is the amount of time that has passed since the last event on the signal. So since the last change on the signal. Uh, the last active uh, uh, attribute, on the other hand, returns also time, but this is the time that has passed since the last transaction. Again, the difference between a transaction and an event is something we still have to understand. Last value gives us the last value of the signal before the, the last event happened. So let's assume that the signal has changed from uh, a value of three to a value of six. 
uh, when we look at signal event, it will be true here when this has happened. And if we use the attribute here, uh, last value, last value will give us a value of three. So what's the data type of uh, this attribute? It's whatever the signal type is, because it is actually returning the value of the signal. Now let's look at these sets of, uh, of attributes, which are again going to act on, uh, on signals, except that most of them this time also have a, an operand between brackets. So um, the first attribute will uh, return a copy of the signal, which is delayed by the amount of time between brackets. So if you have this signal and then you uh, use this attribute, you can generate a signal that is delayed relative to the original signal by whatever time you want. Uh, signal stable of time is a uh, Boolean waveform, so it will generate a signal, right? And here we have an example of this. So here we are using a, uh, a, a syntax that says y is equal to x uh, apostrophe stable time t capital. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a new waveform y, and y is going to be high as long as x has been stable for longer than a value t capital. So here y is 1 because x has been stable for a very long time. As soon as there is a change on x, y is going to deassert, and it's going to be deasserted for t capital because after t capital passes, x has been stable on the new value for more than t capital, and thus y would assert again. But see here, x is, is doing two uh, transitions, it's doing two events, and y is going to ignore the event in the middle because uh, x was not stable for longer than t capital uh, during this period, and so it will ignore it, and it will only assert again once a period of t has passed with x being stable. Uh, so again, uh, the signal quite of time is going to be uh, uh, very similar, except it's going to create a waveform that is true when the signal has been quiet, meaning no uh, transactions, for an amount of time t capital. So one of the most uh, important topics about events is whether or not they are synthesizable, meaning whether we can use them in designs which we expect uh, to synthesize or not and also whether or not it is a good practice to use, uh, to, use, uh, to use attributes. Some attributes are actually uh, very safe to use and their use should be encouraged. Some others are not. So basically any attribute that creates a copy of a signal or any attribute that uh, returns a specific amount of time that deals with time as an operand or as a return, so if the return value is time or if it requires a time in the operand, that attribute should never be used within the design. It should only be used in the test bench to do testing. This is not synthesizable. Attributes that act on uh, data types and give you uh, information about data types are generally safe to use. If they are used um, in a correct way so that they return a value that can be um, that is a constant at synthesis time then they are uh, perfectly safe to use uh, attributes that have to do with entities and entity names are usually used in assert statements in order to aid in debugging this means that they will normally be ignored by the synthesizer so it really doesn't matter if you use them or not but the general advice I would give is to use attributes carefully. If you know the result of, the using, of using the attributes, use it. If you cannot guess it, maybe avoid it. One other thing we have to talk about is user-defined attributes. This is the syntax of defining an attribute. Here, for example, we are defining an attribute for um, a, state, a type called state type. And it is, the name of the attribute is state encoding. And uh, this is the value of this attribute. In the second line, we are defining a, uh, an attribute of a component. The name of the component is adder1. The name of the uh, attribute is size adder. And the value of the attribute is very big. What is very big? Don't worry about it. So if you say, for example, uh, size adder, uh, apostrophe, adder1, 
this is going to return a value of very big. So user-defined attributes are usually only useful for very large designs, which involve many design teams uh, that need to move uh, information between uh, designs and between work libraries. For smaller designs, uh, there's really no, no need to use user-defined attributes. So you can basically just know that they exist, but you can ignore them.